Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending September 3rd. First off, I would like to give a shout out to Brooke, daughter of Michael T. Double Lot Buckshot. I love my younger viewers and hope to encourage a lot of young people to explore science and even a scientific career possibly. We're sorely lacking in the United States in scientific education compared to the rest of the world, so I really enjoy it, especially uh, the younger viewers that are interested in science. So shout out to Brooke. Glad to have you as one of my viewers. I'm dedicating this next article to you. This is about Irish polar bears. It seems like, uh, oh, first of all, I want to give credit to Hank Two Wheels, my friend from the UK, for sending this to me. Also, other people have sent it too, but he was the very first one to send it. Uh, many of the articles that I'm going to be talking about, multiple people have sent them. So um, I'll try to give credit to at least the very first person that sent them. Polar bears have maternal Irish brown bear ancestors, according to the BBC article. As usual, the links will be down in the description below. Originally, scientists thought that Alaskan brown bears were the closest relative of polar bears, but it seems like polar bears crossed over some ice sheets about 100,000 years ago during the last ice age and mated with Irish brown bears. And as a matter of fact, tests show in the mitochondrial DNA of polar bears that every polar bear now is related to Irish brown bears. This is a very interesting article. If you get a chance, check it out. Next up, it seems like Stephen Hawking may be right about the Higgs boson. He said himself that he believes the Higgs boson does not exist and the Large Hadron Collider will not discover the Higgs boson. And right now, at present, it's reaching about a 95% possibility probability actually that the Higgs boson does not exist. It says in the middle of the article, CERN scientists declared that over the entire range of energy the collider has explored from 145 to 466 billion electron volts, the Higgs boson is excluded as a possibility with a 95 percent probability. Now it's not considered uh, definitive until it reaches a possibility of 99.99997 then they say the um, lack of existence of the Higgs boson will be uh, definitive. So it has to reach that point. It's still possible that it could exist and has just been eluding discovery, but it's looking more and more like the Higgs boson does not exist, along with uh, I actually myself have talked to my son-in-law, my brother-in-law from Fermi Lab that's a physicist there and told him that I don't really believe the graviton exists or will be discovered, obviously. So uh, we differ in that view, too, and it's uh, yet to be discovered so we will see what happens. Next I would like to feature a video by a friend of mine, Cash Store One. It's not very often that somebody comes up with a very useful gadget that I have not ever even seen or heard of. I'll put a link to the video down below. This is the eraser wheel. This is used to remove decals, stickers. Uh, the original was developed by uh, 3M. It's called the Wonder Wheel. and. Uh, I would suggest probably don't buy that version. If you go to Amazon and uh, Amazon.com and type in eraser wheel, you can see several other brands that seem to be made in the USA and probably even made by the same place that manufactures the 3M Wonder Wheel, but way cheaper in cost. The Wonder Wheel costs you about 20 bucks, whereas these wheels are between 8 and $14. Uh, be sure and get an arbor with it too, but this is a real... Um, it's a really fantastic device. Basically, you just put it on a drill with the arbor, and you just use the eraser function of it to just go over the um, decal or whatever, and it takes it right off and doesn't seem to harm the paint. So I guess if you're careful with it and don't go crazy, this is a very, very excellent gadget, and one I don't know about before. So thank you, Cash Store One, and uh, check out the video when you get a chance. This next gadget now, I am gonna, I'll am gonna. i put a picture up of this one too. Uh, I have no idea who came up with the idea of this, at least to advertise it this way. This is called the Travel Track Book Caddy. Now why would you give this a name like this? I, I think maybe the original tension might have been to have this be for an exercise bicycle, but if you look at the picture, you're gonna see they use a typical uh, regular 10, 12 speed bike, whatever you wanna call it, where they show this book caddy on the bike not that people are not unsafe enough doing their texting and things like that. Could you imagine somebody riding down a busy city street with the travel track book caddy on their handlebars and reading a book? So uh, I don't know. Just the name and the way this is advertised is a, a little bit scary to me, and hopefully nobody will get hurt. People will 
realize that this is probably more likely something you would want to use for an exercise bicycle. So anyway, that's all the articles for this week. Thanks everybody during the summertime. Lots of people sent in articles. I'm going to get around to quite a few of them as I have time. And uh, thanks, thanks everybody for watching and keeping it going. This is the beginning of my fourth season, I believe the third season on YouTube. So take care everybody and I will catch you next week.